Michelle, I read a quote from Ellen White the other day that keeps resonating in my mind. Curious now, what did you read? She said that those who share in Christ's glory must also share in His ministry. Hmm, that is so true, Steve. God calls us to work perseveringly for the millions of souls that are perishing in their sins. We must do our part to help them, help the weak, the wretched, and the despondent. Exactly, but there's more. If we take up this work, we have to make the life of Christ our constant study and use every capability in His service. Hmm. And our sincere and unselfish effort will be followed by precious results because we are collaborating with God and the angels are by our side. As Galatians 6, 9 says, And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. But those, Michelle, who don't impart the light they have received will one day realize their loss. We must persevere and act as Jesus did. Christ gave us an example of unselfish, continuous, patient, and sacrificial work in the task of soul saving. Hmm. And if we follow Him, hundreds of souls will be won for eternity. You know, in the book, Lift Him Up, Ellen White wrote, If every church member were a living missionary, the gospel would speedily be proclaimed in all countries, to all peoples, nations, and tongues. Let sanctified ability be brought into the work of proclaiming the truth for this time. If the forces of the enemy gain the victory now, it will be because the churches neglect their God-given work. For years, the work has been kept before us, but many have been asleep. If Seventh-day Adventists will now arouse and do the work assigned them, the truth will be presented to our neglected cities in clear, distinct lines and in the power of the Spirit. Amen. I have confidence in our church. Visiting OCI ministries in different countries, I have the privilege of seeing a large force of missionaries impacting thousands of lives there. Hmm, right. When God's people do wholehearted and faithful work, the efficacy of Christ's grace is seen. Hmm. Yes, Ellen White gives us a wonderful message of hope about this. She says, his workers will then see eye to eye and the arm of the Lord, the power of which was seen in the life of Christ, will be revealed. Confidence will be restored and there will be unity in the churches throughout our ranks. To every worker, Christ promises the divine efficiency that will make his labors a success. Mm. As followers of Jesus, our work is very clear and specified throughout the Bible, and the reward is indescribable. Let's share in Jesus' ministry so that we can also share in His glory. Financial accountability. Sometimes those words breed a little bit of nervousness inside of us, but they don't need to. It can be easy just to do things in a ministry and not want to really worry about finances and keeping track of that or reporting on that. But really, everything that we have in our ministry is a stewardship from God. And so we want to make sure that we are using our funds well. This means that when our team is using funds, we as ministry leaders need to be checking on how they're used. But someone else needs to be checking on us too. Our donors give money. They want to know how these funds are being used and that they are being used for the purposes for which they were given. This is why checks and balances are so important in our finances. The person spending the money should have someone else ideally signing off on that money. And then someone else can check on how that is being recorded to make sure that our records are straight. Maybe you have a treasurer in your organization that checks things. Maybe you also have your whole board to be able to look over things. It's good to encourage your team to hold each other accountable and to look at the finances and make sure that things are happening in the way that they should. 
We can think that this is a lack of trust, but actually it's not. It's just a way for us to all ensure that nothing is being missed. Some organizations even hire external auditors to go through their books, which can be a very good practice to invest some money into. But you know, reporting regularly is really just a way that we build transparency. And transparency breeds trust. I have friends that publish regularly what's happening with all their money and what they're doing with it and how it's helping in ministry. And this makes me more likely to give to their ministry because I know where that money is going. I know it's being used well. So don't be afraid of accountability. If you know what God wants you to do, then you cannot fail. However, succeeding in raising a ministry demands knowledge and talent supplemented by godly counsel based on practical experience. Start Right will provide the impetus needed to make an informed start. Therefore, be diligent to present yourself approved to God. A worker who does not need to be ashamed. You cannot but succeed. Download it now. Today's story comes from Red River Outpost in Kentucky, United States. Kentucky's population is above 4 million. Their main religion is Protestantism, with 49% of them being Evangelical Protestant. But 22% of the population doesn't follow any faith or religion. We are glad to say we have a ministry making a difference there. Red River Outpost focuses on reaching its neighbors through weekly outreach activities, a restaurant in town, a 10-day health challenge, and other health-focused programs. In addition, they started a construction business as an industry to build homes and relationships in the community. The ministry also has a studio as a means to share the gospel, provide online training, and promote their on-site activities. They are in the process of opening a sanitarium and a training school with the goal of saving souls. Everything they do is through the lens of evangelism. Now let's watch the testimony of some of their guests. My husband would tell me that he had met some of the staff in Red River. He had kind of been looking into this wellness center because he realized we both needed it. Because he is, he had the back trouble and he had the can four kinds of cancer and he'd had all kinds of surgeries and so forth. And uh, he said, let's go up to the wellness center. And I said, oh, I can't go for 10 days. You know, I can't, <laughs> I can't be gone that long. And I don't know about that. Well, you know, he kept, he'd go and study some more and he'd study some more. And he'd come back and say, let's go. And we would like to take our son and our nephew. If you don't like your body and you don't feel good and you don't get around very well, um, you know, you want to change. So I said, okay, we'll try it. I never thought that actually I could ever learn to eat the food that they prepare. I never uh, realized how good it could taste until after I got here and started eating it. And it got better every day. And the uh, physical therapy they did on me has really helped me. Also, uh, we had devotions twice a day, open discussions. I've learned a whole lot more. So coming up here, it has just changed our life. I haven't taken any medication since I've been up here. Uh, my blood pressure is, uh, is going down. It's still every once in a while wants to jump up, but I think it's just me and my hypertension that I do sometimes. And uh, so it's been wonderful. I, it just changed our life completely. Uh, I can walk now be better uh, they, with their massages and the uh, wellness and the food and changing our eating habits. Uh, it's just been great. Am I going to be changing my lifestyle? Most definitely. Because it, uh, you don't realize that your body is made of what you eat. 
So therefore, uh, we've changed our eating habits, and and I didn't think that, you know, that I could possibly change and do some of the changing that we've had to do. But you know, you decide which one's best to look. And we have learned so much since we've been here, and grown closer to the Lord. We thought we were close to begin with, but man, when you get up every day, it's it's exciting. It's exciting to be close to the Lord and feel His presence, and that's worth it, what they work with besides your body. Yeah, I think we need more places like this in the world. I think it's wonderful because about, I tell my wife, this is a missionary event here that they people come here uh, voluntary, a lot of them, and uh, you know, they come here to help the people in this county. We're a poor county, and we got the highest cancer rate in the state, and it's, uh, it's a beautiful place, and it uh, seems like they got all the ingredients to help you in your health, and teach you how to eat right, and, uh, we, and learn more about God, and uh, we just, we just love it. Well, it, we most definitely need more places like this. And I never ever thought that we, the four, five of us, might sit, my daughter-in-law's here too. And we all got together and decided we'd come, we'd go. HD wouldn't let us rest until we did. So we all decided to come up here together to kind of give each other moral support to see what we were getting into. And uh, so they've, I mean, they're eating things they didn't even think about ever eating, but they are so interested in getting their body back in shape and all the aches and the pains that my son especially has that uh, they're willing to give a little bit and not eat the, the things that's not as chemicals and the uh, sugars and the things that's not good for you, they've decided that it would help their bodies, which it has. They're both just really, uh, well, they just love it because they can see the difference, especially our son that can, uh, um, you know, just feel better and his body's getting, looking better and it's just been, that's great. And I wish we had, well, I would hope that we could get, you know, more places like this. we just watched is the result of sharing in Jesus' ministry. When we do our part, God gives us the privilege of seeing how His love and power can transform lives, how the Holy Spirit can impact others through our ministry. I invite you to look at Jesus, to meditate about His life when He was on earth. How did He treat people? Did He ever become weary in His work? Did he ever draw back from sacrifice and hardship? Friends, God is calling us to do our part to join him in ministry so we can also join him in glory. Would you accept the call? Would you help others to be saved? Outpost Centers International is committed to doing God's mission, and we want to partner with you. Please get in touch with us to help light up the world together.